Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, it's time for more of Bayonetta. This chapter is honestly pretty wild. You're really not going to like what comes next. I hope you know that. Don't tell me. Air Cheshire has awful in-flight entertainment and horrendous food. Think about it. Those things that downed the jet aren't just going to let us land on their island. You think we can just say, hey, we're here, and they'll bring us a cake? Things look good from up here. But the further down you go, the harder it is to not notice the reality. Oh, come on, buddy. Cheshire, look. Oh, I'm looking. She's currently wearing an outfit made entirely of wet human hair. <laughs> Mummy, why is that man sweating so much? <gasps> oh, fuck me. I don't think this kind of gag would normally bother me, but this whole section is kind of giggling teenage boy in time. to my fantasy zone. Get ready. So, yeah, this entire chapter is a uh, is a shmup, a shoot 'em up, uh, a complete departure from the previous uh, mechanical genre of the game. But um, one which, oh yeah, by the way, uh, content warning for um, I don't know if anyone has uh, motion sickness, maybe. But uh, there's going to be a lot of this sort of thing happening, so you might want to sit this one out at least until... Um, I'll put a timestamp in the uh, episode description for the um, second half of the chapter, which is like two, three thirds... It's not three thirds. Two, two thirds of the way through. <laughs> um, after a hell of a lot of this sort of thing. So... Um, Continuing this game's obsession with uh, the history of Sega, this chapter is a love letter to a specific shmup called um, Space Harrier, which uh, every chapter opens with the main character yelling, Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. So, see, you know, based on the fact of the uh, intro dialogue to this one, it's pretty unambiguously a reference to that. Additionally, you might notice that this piece of music is the piece of music at the start of the. Uh, many of the uh, mini-games at the end of the chapters, the um, Angel Attack sh uh, shooting gallery mini-game. So the thing about that is I misidentified that as a piece of Sonic the Hedgehog music. It very much has that style, but it's actually the theme of Space Harrier. Um, so I'm not sure if the game's obsession with Sonic the Hedgehog is really the case. It's just an obsession with old Sega in general. Um, as I've said before, there are a ton of references to old Sega games constantly throughout this game. And um, I haven't been pointing them out because I don't, I'm not super familiar with those games and I don't want to have to write down and constantly check my notes about like what is and isn't in a given chapter. I'll, I won't remember, so why bother? But uh, this chapter is a bit more egregious than most of the rest on that basis. So, I should also point out that I'm actually terrible at shmups. I've enjoyed playing a lot of them, I do find them very fun, but for the most part I'm quite bad at them. Additionally, the um, Space Harrier style, which uh, I can only think of one other example off the top of my head that actually matches this style, and that's the Panzer Dragoon series. Um, I mean, normally they scroll vertically up from the up from the bottom or down from the top, or they scroll horizontally, left to right. Um, a shmup that is looking upwards past your uh, past your you know character is quite unusual as far as I can tell, which makes a lot of sense because it's quite uh, hard to see what you're doing. It um, definitely makes it harder to control, harder to aim, and harder to not vomit, you know. So, all things considered, 
Uh, now I'm being very careful with this guy because um, there's actually two collectibles on this chapter, which might surprise you considering we're riding a rocket. Um, and there, they are on two of these sections. There are two of these little fighting sections where you defend your rocket. Um, and if you successfully finish off the last enemy with a torture attack, it drops a heart piece. So, uh, yeah, got to be careful about that, just in case you're playing along at home. So, uh, God, what was I even saying? I don't remember. I was talking about Space Harrier, that's right. So, um, every, <laughs> every time I rotate my screen around like that, I lose track of what I was saying. Uh, yeah, uh, a shmup scrolling from forwards, forwards from behind the main character is quite unusual in my experience. Um, as I said, Space Harrier is one, and I can only think of, um, Panzer Dragoon. So, uh, one mechanical note about this mission is that, um, well, first off, you can just hold down A and X to shoot forever, uh, but Y and B shoot rockets, which will do a huge amount of bonus damage to, well, anything, which is, I mean, the game calls them rockets, they're actually, uh, wicked weave fists, so they do a lot of bonus damage, but, um, yeah, see how I got witch time here? You can score witch time off of fireball attacks, and as far as I can tell, only fireball attacks. Even if you get a perfect dodge timing, which is what's marked by that little um, record scratch slowdown noise that uh, it makes any time I have been doing that for this entire game so far. Don't know if you noticed that audio cue, but it's definitely that. Uh, oh boy, I'm dizzy. Um, but yeah, so the rockets do a big amount of bonus damage. Um, and uh, each rocket is worth one one orb of magic power. So it's generally worth saving them for uh, these boss fights. But um, yeah, personally I like to hang on to them for the rocket top fight em up sections so that I can make sure I get my heart piece. But uh, yeah, okay, I got distracted a lot there, I was saying. So Oh yeah, you can score witch time off of the fireballs, you can't score witch time off of the, the green orbs. Um, I think there might be some physical attacks, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just those two. Still, these are actually a new type of enemy which only appear on this level. And they are, they look like braves, but they have rocket launchers and one big, like, like a, a, a face head thing. I wonder if we're supposed to assume that they are more uh, cybernetically enhanced angels, much like the one of the, uh, the boss that we just fought in the previous chapter. Here we go. So, I'd like to believe that, um... Do you know, I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. I'm just going to... yeah. So, most of this chapter is these, uh... Uh, rocket section, but um, the final third of it is a is the final boss fight with Jean, for which I will need all of my concentration, so I'm going to post-record audio for that. Just, you know, being open and honest and upfront ahead of time. So, I wonder if I can kill that one with rockets. Oh, they home in. That's good to know. Your bullets also home in a little bit, but not massively. Um, but yeah, so, you remember when I said that this game's absurdity curve really kicks off at around chapter, like, what, 10? Um, yeah, we go from wizard battles atop a crashing aeroplane, I refuse to say jet, to fighting a dragon wearing a battleship on a surfboard, to literally riding atop a enormous missile like Dr. Strangelove, um, while shooting lasers at dragons. It's absurd and insane and I love it and honestly I played through the final five or six chapters of this game in one sitting. Um, I was just so excited and so caught up in the, in the acceleration and the exhilaration and the escalation and the absurdity curve. So, uh, Possibly one episode every couple days is not <laughs> the best way for you guys to experience it, but hey, you know what? I think you should all play this game. 
I think it's great fun, and I think it deserves to be played. So, I uh, hope you enjoy the hearty recommendation, Mr. Sakurai. Wait, no, shit, that's not the right. Who the fuck is it? Kamiya? Hideki Kamiya was the director of this game? Um, I promise you, I do do research, I just also have severe memory issues. Which is why I forget what I'm saying constantly. But, um... I'm tempted to check out Space Harrier off, uh, having played this, but I suspect I would do terribly at it. Shmups are all about, you know, score attack and perfecting things and playing very, very difficult games perfectly. So when I play them, I tend to get halfway through by the skin of my teeth with a really bad score and then be like, I'm stuck. I can't get any further. I don't know what to do. And then, uh, actually, I might as well just spam rockets. I just realized <laughs> there's no more... Uh, there's no more combat sections, no more melee sections. So, uh, yeah. I also love that the, the continuing, like, absurd Art Deco Baroque steampunk... It's, I mean, it's not steampunk, but it has some steampunk elements. Um, but it's also not diesel punk, which is what I would normally call something with those sort of pseudo um, steampunk elements. I mean, I guess the taxonomy of aesthetics is, is a fool's endeavour anyway. Um, but but these... Uh, yeah, um, the way that even these missiles have uh, these odd sunbursts of halos on them and um, pipes running down the sides, both of which completely ruin the aerodynamic profile, but this game cares nothing for realism, as we have established. Um, I mean, you know, that plane in the last chapter couldn't possibly have stayed in the air, really. Um, I guess you could call this a baroque if you were willing to be completely absurd. I'm quite pleased with that one. So, I think we are nearly out. There's a couple more of these, and then one final boss, which is going to be temperant here again. Um, so... I do think it's interesting that um, the first two bosses show up again repeatedly, um, both in the Paradiso chapter and here, and in the next chapter as well, actually. So those ones and those ones alone show up again. The third boss and the fourth boss are never seen again, as far as I can tell. Um, there might be an instance of the fourth boss, boss showing up again in the next chapter, but if that's the case... But I don't think that's the case, I'm just not sure. But um, Justitia, or Ayustitia, or Lustitia, it's kind of difficult to tell which uh, reading is intended of that name, um, is never seen again. Just the one. Just the one. Um, and I can't remember which Cardinal Virtue it's supposed to be. But it'd be amusing to me if that was a reflection of its character. If it was, for example, um, temperance or prudence, maybe? Might have been prudence. Um, like, you know, I got my ass kicked once. What good can I do again, you know? But... Oh, boy. Uh, as I said, every single time I do... <laughs> every single time I do a rolling dodge, I... I'm getting used to track of what I was saying. I do really enjoy the gag of this level. Um, it's it's a fun uh, mechanical change-up. It's a fun mini-game. And um, it's a nice palate cleanser between the previous and previous sections of the game in this one. But I think it outstays its welcome. I think it's a little bit too long. So I've been trying to focus on dodging. Um, there's a very simple reason for that, which is that uh, you go into the boss fight at the end of this chapter uh, with as much health as you have left over from this section, so it's generally to your advantage to be a bit more cautious. I have not been doing that because I am never cautious in games. Uh, I'm one of those players who maximizes attack and always goes all out, so I think it's time to crash a rocket. Mummy? 
I mean, yeah, it is pretty neat. Horrible futurist skyscrapers that look like something out of Bioshock. Hey, remember I talked about that escalation curve? It's time for skyscraper ICBM wizard battle! Also exposition, because this game is absolutely in love with its own brand of delicious nonsense. Welcome to Isla del Sol. Island of wealth and power. John, if you've made it this far, that should be enough. You're back to your old self. This is where we finish what was started so long ago. A friend of my enemy is also my enemy, be it witch or sage. The Lumen Sages. They were our counterbalance as overseers. Between us, there was a law that was never to be broken. It stated that the intersection of light and dark would bring calamity to this earth. But 500 years ago, a child was born in clear violation of this tenet. That child was you. Rocketry for emphasis. 500 years ago. The disaster this caused sent the clans into a spiral of chaos that continues to be felt to this day. You, the half-breed of light and dark, are at the center of that chaos. Rude. Allowing you to continue to exist is a danger that cannot be accepted. When the eyes of the world are within our grasp, the power of creation will be awakened. That is why the left eye, our treasured left eye, will never fall into the hands of another. The left eye, our treasured left eye, will never fall into the hands of another. Bayonetta, it is time that this is brought to an end. That you are brought to an end. You. You did it. It is our charge as witches to protect the treasures of the clan by any means necessary. Even if it means burning every inch of this island to a crisp. I'm really beginning to hate missiles. You know, I have no idea what the hell you girls got going on here. But you don't mind if I take this off your hands, do you? Get in, Cerecita. Still treating her like a sack of potatoes. Mommy. <laughs> Mommy! <sighs> Bayonetta just staring at her lips. Theresa. Bayonetta. Time is of the essence. This can wait no longer. So she didn't even need the launcher to launch those. Whoa! Okay. Hi there, this is future Tessa. Uh coming here to commentate a fight for one of the last times that will be happening throughout this uh, Let's Play series because we're actually nearly finished. As I'm as I'm sure you're well aware. Um, at the start of next episode I'll be talking a little bit about uh, some logistical stuff, but that's irrelevant because what's happening right now is extremely thrilling fighting. This is the final fight with Jean and honestly it's absolutely thrilling. This is possibly my favourite um, Jean fight in the game. It might be one of my favourite fights in the game, bar none. 
you really feel like you are dueling an adversary who has all of the same skills and capabilities as you do. She is as good at this as you are. And um, the <laughs> you might notice here that there is... Uh, the fight actually keeps going while you're doing this. That's not a scripted thing happening in the background. Um, you still have control while the camera swings away and the building falls over. Oh hey, the sun really does shine out of her ass. It's also got these handful of recontextualization moments where you realize, in case you hadn't put two and two together already, given the, what, 12 hours of <laughs> playtime so far, if you hadn't yet realized that she is the other last remaining Umbral Witch, that is what really clues, clues you in, huh? So this fight has a few phases and um, they escalate from one to the next really nicely, which I appreciate. Uh, in this phase she can summon these rockets in, but she also summons giant versions of- well, not more giant, but she summons the finishers that you've been using to kill angels the entire way through the game. Um, I think canonically they're contra she's contracted to different demons, but they all happen to look identical to yours. And yeah, you remember how I've been talking about the absurdity curve? That is two people rallying an ICBM. It's it's pretty cool, I've got to say. While, you know, magically fighting sideways on the side of a size skyscraper in an art deco futurist metropolis for the fate of the world. Um, but this kind of lightning fast kung fu duel is just extremely satisfying, and all the more so for the fact that I have rocket launchers strapped to my feet. This is just bringing us into the third phase. Which of course takes place in which time as we ride a rocket through the city. What the purpose of these rockets is, I'm not sure. I assume they were part of the uh, defense batteries that we learned about in a previous chapter. Uh, the Yellowborn Air surface to air defenses. But that is just... Why, why are they bombing their own city? That's something I really don't understand. We saw an aeroplane at the start of the game that had a whole bunch of um, cultists on board and they will sacrifice themselves to summon an angel. But... Why is... Oh hey, that was the Platinum logo on that building. That's got a nice little touch. Um, but is this some kind of blood sacrifice? Are they intentionally bombing their own city as a blood sacrifice to power whatever it is that they're doing? Because I got the impression that wasn't necessary. That was why they wanted all the witch corpses, right? To power the weird mystical things? Also, I think this is the first point in the entire game where I actually succeed on one of these uh, punching contests. And here we are in, I believe, the final phase. Where we fight up and down the side of this penthouse, in and out of its beautiful uh, water feature garden. But yeah, uh, honestly this fight is just... It's extremely tense and extremely thrilling. There's a kind of a almost Sekiro kind of knife edge parry counter parry thrust situation going on as you um, hack your way through this beautiful duel. At this point you can also pick up some health which is useful because you retain your health bar from the space harrier section previously. Um, so <laughs> if you don't want to lose points for using items you have to hold on until you get to this bit and then start smashing flower pots. Um, which actually kind of, far from being, um, you know, pulling you out of the moment, it actually kind of fits as you get kicked through a flower pot, which drops a health item and heals you. But, uh, yeah, you, you pull out every single trick you have in the book to beat her in this section, as you are completely, perfectly, evenly matched. Um, and these kind of, like, two absolute... Incredibly powerful combatants blinking in and out of reality, zipping back and forth, dodging, parrying, thrusting. It's its amazing. It's a spectacle. I'm enjoying watching this. I think uh, Past Me did a pretty good job, even if I do say so myself. Um, honestly, some of these moments seem almost scripted. That one was pretty cool. Um, I didn't remember half of the stuff I did, but yeah. I don't have much more to say about it mechanically other than that it's like probably the high point of the game because you are an evenly matched in an evenly matched duel with someone with identical capabilities in a beautiful setting. Um, yeah. 
flashing in and out. It's great. I do always seem to fall for the uh, wicked weaves that she lances, though. They're actually quite dodgeable, and that's necessary because they are, as I said, the only way to get witch time while fighting her. However, um, she has very little visual telegraphing for it. There's a fairly large dodge window, but um, her animations are quite small and subtle for that particular attack. She just snaps her fingers. So here we are approaching the end. And there it is. My fucking heart rate is through the roof. A majestic swan dive resulting in a sudden thump upon concrete. Now it's decided. So it is. The fear is still not gone from your eyes. Fear? The memories you've held for 500 years are the source of your fear. They cloud your vision. But now you've accepted your fate. That is how you bested me. That is why you possess the most beloved of Umbran treasures. That is why you possess the left eye. We fought for this stone, and because of it, everyone died. That gem brings back so many memories. Bayonetta has remembered this memory about six times now, each in a context that reveals a bit more and recontextualizes it as she re-understands it and her own history, and she's still not finished. We're going to be seeing this again. Do not fear your fate. Stand, Teresa. Dial in her head swings to gets it. In the innocence of our childhood. We used to play together as friends, but as time passed, perhaps even my eyes were clouded with fear. We were. Do not fear your fate. Stand, Ceresa. Stand and open your eyes. For with every truth, there is another one to be seen. <laughs> Is that kissing for them? Is that a goodbye kiss? Sean. Not to undercut the gravity of this moment or anything. Hey. Is it over? What? It's not like you don't scare the shit out of me all the time. Ceresa. I don't know whether to shoot you or to take you to Vegas for good luck, Cheshire. Give me more credit than that. If you must know where L-U-K-A Luca is concerned, there's no such thing as luck. Only skill. Oh, it's his turn for a flashback. I love the comic flourishes in this game so much. There's a real playfulness to the direction. You didn't expect me to trust bitches. I mean, 
witches, did you, Bayonetta? How's the little one? Out like a light. But okay other than that. What about you? You really think I'm gonna let myself be seen in public with a girl looking all beat up like that? Oh. I look dreadful, do I? Huh? You'll have to learn to wipe that stupid look off your face, or I'll never let you keep chasing me around this world. Got that? Luca? <laughs> now that's more like it. And that's the end of that chapter. I love that brief moment of emotional intimacy between uh, an ancient witch dressed like an explosion in a BDSM club and a crime-fighting spider-manning journalist who seems to be dressed in a hazmat, half a hazmat suit, and of course a small child from the 1500s wearing brocade. The weirdest thing is that I am actually invested in the, like, friendship between these characters. Uh, it shouldn't feel... Like, it shouldn't feel emotionally true, and yet to me somehow it does, despite the absolute ludicrousness of the situation. I, um, I think it's kind of nice. Uh, I do criticise the sort of vague implication at some kind of a sexual tension between them, or a romantic tension between them and those sorts of moments, but, like... I much more buy it as them just having become friends. So that's what I'll choose to believe. Also, the moment she said, we were, I got the line from Heroes by David Bowie stuck in my head. Because we were lovers. Still, I'm not exactly hiding my opinions on that, am I? Anyway, that's all from me for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and there's links to my other projects in the description. Thank you so much for watching.